Hello everyone, I'm Yael Dean from University of Toronto. Today I'm going to talk about our work, Interoperator Scheduler for CNN Acceleration. This is a joint work with collaborators from University of Toronto, Victor Institute, MIT, and SAMU. Our work starts from observing that the sequential execution widely adopted by deep learning frameworks underutilizes the hardware. In this work, we propose Interoperator Scheduler that uses the interrupter parallelization to improve the device utilization and accelerate the same execution. Inside iOS, we employ dynamic programming algorithm to explore the schedule space exhaustively and find the optimal schedule. iOS achieves 1.1 to 1.5 times speed up comparing to state-of-the-art libraries. Same models are widely used in our daily life. It is important to efficiently deploy these models. However, is there an inference in current deep learning libraries while utilizing the underlying hardware? The answer is no. First, let's look at the trend in CERN design. Well, here we use VGNet, Inception V3, and NASNet as examples. People tend to use more convolutions in their network. However, the average size of convolution decreased. On the other hand, the GPU peak performance increased a lot. We take NVIDIA Tesla GPUs as an example. The peak performance increases almost linearly with the time. Then let's have a look at the intra and interoperator parallelization. Sequential execution is widely adopted by deep learning frameworks, which execute the operators one by one. Computation of the operator is parallelized through the stress in a GPU kernel. We call such kind of parallelization intraoperator parallelization. It can suffer from underutilization problem especially when we execute a small operator on a powerful GPU. On the other hand, we can do the computation of multiple operators simultaneously. We call this kind of parallelization as interoperator parallelization, which usually has a better device utilization. We use a concrete example to show this. In this example, the utilization of operator B is 33%, while the utilization of concurrent execution of operator A and B is 71%. There are different ways to group operators to do the interpreter parallelization. Let's first look at an existing approach with front schedule policy. With front schedule policy executes all available operators stage by stage. We use this model to illustrate this schedule policy. At the beginning of execution, there are three convolutions ready to execute. Convolution A, C, and D. We front policy would choose the three convolutions here as the first stage. After that, we can execute convolution B because its dependent convolution A has been executed in the first stage. The latency of this schedule is 0 0.37 milliseconds. However, if we move the convolution C from the first stage to the second stage, we can get a better schedule which takes 0.33 milliseconds. There are two reasons of the speed up. First, we can only get a marginal benefit when we put an operator to a stage that has already saturated the device. Second, when we put more operators to front stages, the later stage would suffer from underutilization problem due to the less operators. This gives us an example why with front schedule policy is suboptimal. The general idea of iOS is to ex explore the schedule space exhaustively. It examines all schedules and finds the best one. However, the biggest challenge of this idea is that the number of potential schedules is exponential in the number of operators. For example, the NASNet model has more than 10 to 12 schedules, which makes it prohibitive to enumerate each schedule To, to address this challenge, we observe that the optimal schedule for a subgraph can be reused. We take this model as an example. There are two incomplete schedules for this model. Both of them have scheduled operator E, F, and G, and leave operators A, B, C, and D unscheduled. If we find the optimal schedule for the unscheduled subgraph, we can reuse it in the two incomplete schedules. 
With this observation, we propose to use dynamic programming algorithm to reuse the optimal schedule for a subgraph. However, the time complexity to schedule a general graph is still exponential in the number of vertices. When considering the problem in more depth, we found that the weight of the thin computation graph is usually small. Here, we use weights to mean the maximum number of parallelizable operators in the model. We take inception network as an example. This is the NASC, NASC inception block. There are six parallelizable operators. Therefore, the weight of the inception model is six. With this observation, we prove that time complexity of dynamic programming algorithm of iOS is only exponential in the weight of the computation graph. Then, let's have a closer look at the dynamic programming adopted by iOS. What iOS does is to break the complicated problem that finds the optimal schedule for the whole computation graph into simpler subproblems that find the optimal schedule for subgraphs. This formula describes how this reduction works. I will explain each component in the formula through this example of computation graph. Here, S represents the operators of the computation graph we want to schedule. We use latency S to represent the latency of the optimal schedule for S. To find the optimal schedule, we enumerate all potential last stage S prime and convert the original problem into a subproblem that finds the optimal schedule for S minus S prime. In this progress, we need to measure the latency of last stage S prime. We can definitely have the last stage of optimal schedule enumerated. Therefore, we can find the optimal schedule through this dynamic programming algorithm. Then have, let's have a look at some components in this formula in more details. Let's first look at the stage latency component. This component measures the latency of parallel execution of operators in the stage S, S prime. iOS consider two parallelization strategies. Let's first look at the concurrent execution strategy. In sequential execution, operators are, ex are executed one by one on GPU. However, if the two operators are independent, we can add concurrent execute them by launching multiple GPU kernels at the same time. This method is generally applicable because we can concurrent execute different operators. However, because operators are usually optimized with the assumption that they can occupy the whole device, we can easily get suboptimal performance due to a resource contention problem. Then let's have a look at the second strategy, operator merge. If we can find a kernel that can do the computation of all operators in the stage, we can just execute that kernel instead of launching many kernels. This is the idea of operator merge. We can use an example to illustrate this. Here, we have two convolutions share the same input. We can stack their filters together and get a large uh, kernel. Operator merge is no, not universally applicable because we cannot always find such a kernel to do all the computation of S prime. However, uh, it usually has a better performance because it reduces the number of kernel launches and potentially reduces memory accesses. We use usually here to indicate that sometimes it may be slower than concurrent execution. For example, we may enlarge a kernel to make it fusible with other kernels which increases the computation. Therefore, iOS would try both strategies and select the better one. Then let's have a look at another component. How can we determine whether a stage S prime can be a last stage of S? We find that S prime can be a last stage of S if and only if there is no edges from S prime to S minus S prime. This is because we have to finish all operators before the last stage first. Let's look at this example. We want to schedule operators S. We should two candidates of last stage here. All edges between uh, S prime and the S minus S prime are from S minus S prime to S prime. We also give a counterexample here. S prime prime is not a last stage of S because there is an edge from S prime prime to S minus S prime prime, which violates the dependency. Let's look at the transition graph, which describes the relationship between subproblems. Then we give the time complexity of iOS. 
we use this simple model to illustrate the transition graph. The graph contains all valid state S. For this example, we have six states, S1 to S6. The edges of the transition graph contains all edges from S to S minus S prime. For example, there is an edge from S1 to S2 when S1 S prime contains a single operator B. Here, S2 equals to S1 minus S prime. Each edge corresponds to a stage and has its latency as weight. We put all edges here. Any pass from the state with all operators to the empty state corresponds to a schedule. For, for example, the path shown here corresponds to a schedule with two stages. What iOS does is to find the shortest path from, uh, among all such paths. Therefore, the time complexity of iOS is, is determined by the number of edges in the transition graph. We have proved that the time complexity of iOS is n over d plus 1 and of that parts 2 to d in the paper. Um, here, n is the number of operators, and d is the maximum number of parallelizable operators. The time complexity is only exponential in d, which is usually small for certain computation graphs. This is all about our proposed method. Let's have a look at the experiments. We take four diverse convolutional neural networks as benchmarks. The first two are Inception V3 and the SwissNet, which are expert design networks. The third and fourth one are Rendmore and NASNet, which are generated by a neural architecture search. We compare iOS with state-of-the-art QDN-based frameworks. We also compare iOS with, with different schedules. All of them are compared on iOS runtime. We conduct, we conduct experiments on NVIDIA Tesla V100, and the versions of QDA and QDN libraries are shown here. iOS takes Q, QDN provided kernels and they use QDA streams to concurrent exit kernels. We compare iOS with state-of-the-art QDN-based frameworks. All performance is normalized to the best framework. We compare iOS with TensorFlow, a state-of-the-art deep learning framework, and the TensorFlow XLA with a compilation optimization. Tassel is a transformation-based optimizer that uses function-preserving transformations to find most efficient com equivalent computation graph. TVM is a state-of-the-art deep learning compilation stack. TVM QDN is TVM backed with QDN provided kernels. TensorRT is NVIDIA provided high-performance inference engine. iOS outperforms all QDN-based frameworks on all benchmarks and achieves 1.1 to 1.5 times speed up. This is because all baselines suffer from unutilization underutilization problem due to sequential execution. We also compare with different schedules. For fair comparison, all schedules are compared on iOS runtime. The performance is normalized to the best schedule. Sequential schedule executes all the operators one by one according to some topological order of the computation graph. We front schedule execute all available operators one stage by stage. iOS merge and iOS parallel only consider a fixed parallelization strategy. iOS both consider both strategies. iOS both achieves the best performance. Here, sequential schedule suffers from underutilization problem because it only use, uses the intra-operator parallelization. Wave front schedule is suboptimal because it is an unbalanced schedule. iOS merge and iOS parallel use fixed parallelization and is suboptimal. We profile active warps of different schedules and try explaining the reason of iOS speedup. We keep running the sequential schedule and iOS schedule of this simple model and profile the active works every q.1 millisecond. We get the active works per millisecond for both sequential schedule and iOS schedule. 
The actual works of iOS schedule is 1.58 times than the, the ones of sequential schedule. When we have more active works, it's more likely that we have eligible works to execute at each cycle, which makes iOS have higher device utilization. In conclusion, we found that sequential execution suffers from underutilization problem, especially for a small operator on a powerful GPU. We propose an intraoperator scheduler to utilize both intra and interoperator parallelism. We employ dynamic programming algorithm to ex explore the schedule space exhaustively and proves that the time complexity is only exponential in the width of the computation graph, which is usually small, making the exhaustive exploration practical. iOS achieves 1.1 to 1.5 times speed up, comparing to the state-of-the-art libraries. We have open sourced our code and welcome to check it out. Thank you.